The question that we're going to try and get out tonight is, uh, what is the case for a public inquiry into the Pan Am Lockerbie crash? I came to hope that justice would deliver answers to the question of who had murdered her. I accepted the restrictions placed on me by the necessary run-up to a judicial um, verdict, namely the criminal investigation, which soon became a burden which was preventing us from asking a lot of questions. And our main interest lies uh, down really in London. Uh, why was it that the British government of the day, which was of course run by Mrs. Thatcher, Lady <coughs> Thatcher, uh, which had received many timely and appropriate warnings, did nothing to protect that flight. Why was it that our fatal accident inquiry in 1990-91 found that the disaster was preventable? Why was it that the fact that um, a break-in in the early hours of the disaster was concealed from the court in Holland until after the verdict had been reached and from our fatal accident inquiry in Scotland in 1990? And that concealment um, led us to feel that the government of the day must have known a great deal more than was being allowed to become public. We fought for every, the wording of every single one of the, wordi of the warnings that we discovered. Uh, we received a rebuff from every single Prime Minister from Margaret Thatcher onwards. Margaret Thatcher wouldn't even meet us to discuss an inquiry. And I hope that what you hear tonight will convince you that there is a burning and desperate need for an inquiry because it's my personal belief that the uh, trial of Abdel Basit al-Megrahi went terribly wrong and that he should never have been convicted. And as many of you are from the media, I have to say that the spectacle of media people climbing over each other to try to exploit uh, party differences over Lockerbie seems to me quite demeaning. And the whole question of dwelling upon uh, the exact reasons for him being sent home to Tripoli a move, incidentally, of which I strongly approve because I don't believe he was guilty and I don't think he should ever have been in prison in the first place. Um, I hope that now discussions can move on to a different sphere. I attended um, a meeting of the Scottish Parliament, which I heard them all discussing which party had done what in terms of uh, releasing this man. I heard only two small voices amongst the MSPs say, raise the question of was this man guilty? And that is a question which, until it's resolved, remains a major stumbling block for those of us who want to get to the truth uh, behind why this disaster ever happened in the first place, who was behind it, and what the role of government was in the failure to prevent it. In July 1988, that's about five months before Lockerbie, the American missile cruiser, the Vincennes, shot down an Iranian airbus uh, with the resulting death of 290 pilgrims. When the vessel got back to America, the captain, Captain Rogers, was awarded a medal for meritorious service. Iran swore uh, briefly that she would get her revenge. I believe that she got it um, at Lockerbie. I believe that she used technology belonging to a Syrian group called the PFLPGC. And indeed, it was the definition of the technology belonging to that group, which I heard in the court at Zeist, which convinced me that McGrahi had nothing to do with Lockerbie because the devices that that group had were designed in such a way that they were stable indefinitely at ground level. You could put them in this building and leave them there for a month and nothing would happen. But if you put them in an airplane without any intervention whatsoever, even if they were inside a suitcase, they would always explode around 40 minutes after the plane's wheels left the tarmac. The Lockerbie plane flew for 38 minutes. There was a break in in the early hours of that day into Heathrow Airport. And as they say in America, I rest my case. I've been uh, very much involved in, in, in trying to explain my understanding of what happened, talking about those issues like, um, was there a deal? Was it all about oil? Was it all about money? And so on, which I'm very happy to, 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 to pick up here if you want. Um, uh, I personally think briefly that there was a deal, but that it wasn't about oil and money. Um, Coming to the question you asked us to address, uh, I, I'm afraid I'm an agnostic. I can't go along with, with Jim Swire in, in his confidence that, that uh, Libya and uh, Abdul Basit al Megrahi were, were innocent. Um, I simply don't know. Uh, moreover, 
Much as I sympathize with the wish of, of uh, Dr. Swire and others to get the truth of the matter, I have no confidence that uh, an, a public inquiry will get to the truth. I'm sure that they would uncover quite a lot of interesting stories about what went wrong with the trial and probably a lot of dirty washing would be washed in public and that may or may not be a good thing depending on your point of view. But I don't think they would get to the truth. The fact is I don't believe anybody knows the truth except whoever did it. And my only real hope that the truth will come out is that there might one day be a deathbed confession. There's an unanswered question which is um, why did McGrahi abandon his appeal? And what do you think? I think that he was lent on in some way, but I can't be quite sure how or who by. I'm very happy to talk or about it. Or for what more. reason? Oh, for what reason? I think because the, um, both the British and the Scottish authorities didn't want all this dirty linen to be washed in public. And so an appeal could have been very embarrassing. And don't, don't forget that, although I'm not a lawyer, still less a Scottish lawyer, I understand that uh, in Scottish law, if the appeal had not been discontinued, which it was, and it's not clear why it was discontinued, it would have been open to McGrath's heirs to continue it after his death. So there would have been a serious appeal had he not decided to withdraw it. There is an enormous amount of information about the circumstances of the destruction of Pan Am 103. But in the context of prosecuting Mr. Al McGrahi, none of it in fact makes sense. Up to a point in September 1990, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, up to that point, there was obviously being constructed a prosecution of someone totally different, who had nothing to do with Libya. And that was a member of the Syrian-backed group that Dr. Swar has referred to. The group having been arrested in Germany in possession of barometric timed bombs constructed in the same, exactly the same Toshiba cassette recorder. <coughs> of which the leader of the group said five had been constructed and one was missing and never recovered. That was shortly before Lockerbie. And a member of that group had been arrested in Sweden, who was found to have traveled to Malta. And he had in his possession clothes bought in Malta. And there was a Maltese shopkeeper who saw his picture in the newspaper and said to his brother, that's the man who bought the clothes from my shop. The clothes, having been traced from debris from the wreckage to a suitcase in which the Toshiba bomb had exploded. But there was a forensic investigative trail that was leading to that group a group that put itself out for hire at the time 